there, welcome to 5D TV. I'm your host, Tanya Kolar. Today I'm really excited to be joined by traditional Chinese medicine practitioner, An Wei Li. She's going to share some amazing tips for you and how you can enhance your well being and quantum leap your life. So stay with us and let's say hello. Welcome. Such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much, Anya. Thank you, everybody. Okay, well, first of all, I want to start with um, you know, what is traditional Chinese medicine? For those who don't know about it, what is it? So it is. Like from the name, it's mm -hmm. from China. It's mm -hmm. originated China, and we have been using the same system of medical uh, practices over 2,000 years. Oh wow! So mm -hmm. it is one probably one of the oldest and very systematically recorded and practiced uh, medical system in today. Wow. Okay. So let's go into uh, you know some some of the deeper um, you know things that you that you do in your practice because mm -hmm. I know there are several different modalities. Exactly. From acupuncture and herbs and, and what you have you so tell exactly. us a little bit about for that. For sure. So the whole practice of traditional Chinese medicine mm -hmm. incorporates uh, acupuncture and herb is a big part. part and also we have a diet, uh, diet suggestions. Mm -hmm. We do uh, cupping and then we do gua sha and uh, also many manipulations even like uh, massage, uh, any uh, sinew muscle works, we are included. Wow. And also a lot part of what we talked about is even counseling, like talking with the patients mm. because Chinese medicine uh, did uh, in its theory did record like emotion disturbance is one of the ca cause for any diseases. Oh interesting, okay I see that, that connection. And so would TCM be beneficial for everyone including children? Yes, definitely. Mm. In China, the Chinese medicine, uh, in, like we are divided into four departments, internal diseases, external disease, gynecological and the pediatric. So we have a special department in China. Now here we have practitioners specialized in children's mm -hmm. pediatric practice too. And we use a lot of hands-on like children's twina massage. And we give them like milder herbal teas. And we even give them herbal soaks in bath to oh, treat them. Wow, yeah. amazing. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about um, you know, each one specifically. So sure. let, let's start with acupuncture. Mm -hmm. okay, so what, what would you do, um, let's say, uh, as an initial consult? Yes, so um, I think 80% and 90% people now come for the initial treatment for acupuncture is for a lot of pain management. Mm -hmm. I think it's very well educated in general public. And uh, we, based on traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture is based on an energy system in your body. So not only the energy is controlling all your sinews, your muscles, your tendons for mm. pain, but it's also internally connected to all your organs. Which means we use acupuncture, we can treat any internal disease, wow. gynecological okay. diseases, mm -hmm. all we can treat it. Okay, so when we're speaking about energy, mm -hmm. um, oftentimes when we hear acupuncture and energy, we'll hear that maybe you know the energy is stuck somewhere mm -hmm. in the body. Exactly. So acupuncture can help release? For sure, mm -hmm. for sure. We are mapped, Chinese medicine is very much um, based on the traditional ways, based on uh, treating our body like electrical and mag magnetic field. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. all our acupuncture points is those little trigger points to amplify the treatment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, usually we have, you know, when you have a pain, the easiest way for Chinese, uh, TCM to explain is your energy is stuck. Mm -hmm. Once your energy is stuck, first um, affect the energy flow and then affect your body fluid and we have a lot of local accumulation of lymph flows, a lot of inflammation in the local area can't be distributed, mm. then that's why you have pain. So with the acupuncture treatment, uh, first we work on the energy level, then your body fluid, then everything follows and give you a oh, healing okay. process. And so then it, you know, it's realigning that energy so that it's flowing through the body, Perfect. up and down, and there's no blockages. Exactly. Yeah. Because in TCM, if yeah. you have a proper flow of energy, you should have no disease. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so how do you discover where the, the blocks are, the energy blocks are mm -hmm. in, in the body? First, usually, um, um, for example, for pain, Mm -hmm. If you have a specific pain in which area, for sure the energy in that area is blocked. Mm -hmm. For a lot of internal organs, and uh, for example, a lot of people nowadays come in for digestion issues, mm -hmm. and you can see um, 
first of all, either you have acid reflux, and it usually comes along with the constipation. Mm -hmm. And also you look at their tongue, is in their middle part of their tongue, which reflects the digestion, is very swollen. So all those tiny little signs and suggestion, your oh. middle part of your body is totally blocked. Mm -hmm. And usually either use the herbs or we use, uh, use acupuncture. Once you descending that energy, help you with them with your bowel movement, usually digestion problem dissolve. Wow. Right? So now would that also work with IBS? Because I can definitely see that IBS has been on the rise. Uh, mm -hmm. And I believe a lot of it has to you know, come from our environment, the foods definitely. that we're eating, the toxins that we're ingesting? Yeah, definitely. I'm a big part of believe um, that um, we are what we eat mm -hmm. and in our today's life and we talked about the toxins and the way we eat, you know, um, and I just, for example, in Buddhist practice in Chinese medicine, the lightest meal should be at the dinner. Okay. By the way, everybody's reversing. Oh yeah, you don't gorgeous. eat the exactly. You don't eat the whole day, and then you just yeah. go all out. We and dinner. save ourselves up. exactly, yeah. which is so mm. bad for your digestion system or your health. So okay. that's a big part, and mm. and the other part is um, um, also as you said, like once you have those, um, and also in Chinese medicine, emotion too. We mm. live in a very stressful environment. Indeed. You know, everybody's overachieving, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So like more is more. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yes. Like mm -hmm. when is enough? Like mm -hmm. never, right? Mm -hmm. So that rising of that emotion, and uh, we said emotion usually stress in TCM reflects in the liver. And once your liver mm -hmm. is overactive, the first one is targeting your earth elements, your digestion. Mm -hmm. Then you will feel like IBS patients. For me, from my treatments for IBS, you ask them. A lot of them, the moment their life or their work is very stressful, the symptoms just get worse. Yeah. Once they go on vacation, everything goes better. It's so that's so a big part in TCM is looking at, is the yeah. emotional part. That, yeah, it's a telltale sign, you know, yeah. for certain, right? If you're experiencing stress and you remove yourself from that environment and then definitely. you can really see what's happening. Yeah. yeah, so definitely in my practice nowadays, I'm very much focused to uh, tell the patient, you know, it's just in fun, uh, very funny, sometimes in the initial uh, like treatment, yeah. you ask them, are you stressed? No, I'm not. No, life is great, exactly. perfect. Yeah. I'm just like, do what I'm supposed to do, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And then few treatment down the road mm. like this yeah you're right I did notice uh. I, um, I was very stressed mm -hmm. so they don't even like consciously realize yeah. right what emotional states and because I found a lot of us um, if you don't uh, pay the attention use the time to do self work mm -hmm. and they are very um, disconnected yeah and that totally makes sense and I'm sure that a lot of viewers can relate right now um, you know being that constant multitasker I think any mom out there would know uh, what a multitasker is and not to say that there's dads that aren't multitaskers but generally you know it is it, it is a female uh, predominance where we yes. don't put ourselves first yes, right we're definitely. constantly stressed out you're taking care of everybody's schedules and your schedule in there as well somewhere Hopefully, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. yeah, so you know, um, I suggest um, like not only my patients or mm -hmm. everyone, and sometimes you know, one day you deserve it. Take like 10 20 minutes, find a quiet place to reconnect with yourself, and you yeah. realize. Um, what emotional or physically, what mm -hmm. what you needed to give to yourself. Yeah, yeah, I love that advice. But how can we how can we reconnect with ourselves? What does that look like for somebody who never puts themselves first and they don't know what to do? How can they start? Mm -hmm. So I usually suggest, uh, like you know, the only like a lot of people is like you, they, they they don't know, like yeah. right. Yeah. So I suggest even just starts with the breathing, some deep mm. abdomen breathing. Okay. Find a quiet place. Let's not move into meditation first. Okay. Because I. I think meditation for some people is such a um, heavy words. They're yeah. not ready to do it. Yeah. I don't even introduce meditation. I said mm. I just do some deep abdomen breathing. Oh. Right? That's find a quiet place, two to five minutes, set up your alarm, by yourself do some deep breathing. Mm. Because what it does from um, you know scientific proof now, because once you do deep breathing, your uh, like nervous system actually is switching from your sympathetic, which is fight and fright, yes. to that calm and quiet, mm -hmm. and that environment allows your body to heal. That's amazing, and I find that uh, today that uh, that that fight or flight response kicks in way too often. Exactly, right? it's sort of become a norm, and that was meant to protect us from danger. Right? Exactly, well, we create a lot of danger in our minds. Exactly, <laughs> yes, yeah. for the you know unnecessary things mm -hmm. or your imagination, mm -hmm. and. Uh, 
again, once you're not fight and flight and your body releases stress hormone, one of them is the major ones, cortisol. Mm -hmm. And that's so e erosive hormones and it does so much damage in your body. Mm -hmm. You look at people coming in with the chronic inflammation, fibromyalgia, for yeah. example, is one. And they, besides all the treatment they're getting, really tap into your emo emotional world right. and look at what needs to be healed, what needs to be let go. Amazing. So now, if when it comes to a lot of these chronic diseases, yes. illnesses, can we reverse the damage that has been done? Um, that would say yes, it can, mm -hmm. but you have to be very dedicated. Mm -hmm. And I think in um, we're looking at Western medicine right now. They really um, hasn't have a very effective system to treat uh, the chronic degenerative disease. Right. So I think that's kind of the ex expertise for the alternative holistic healings, mm -hmm. and Chinese medicine is one of them. Okay. So we look at that. Um, patients come in. We look at that. Um, as I said, all diseases symptoms goes back to your body, mind, and spirit. Mm -hmm. You have to look like your diet, your lifestyle, your emotional states. Once you address those three, your body is amazing. Yeah. It can, first of all, to slow down what path you're going down mm -hmm. and then slowly let your body to hear in the reverse. Yeah, and of course, um, you know, so many people have experienced pain and illness for such a long time that mm -hmm. they become accustomed to it and they feel like that's the norm. And yeah. Especially as we age, we just think, oh, of course I have aches and pains. It's normal, but mm -hmm. really it's not. Um, we have the ability to change that. For sure, mm -hmm. for sure. And um, like for, for example, for I have patients come with uh, arthritis, the rheumatoid mm -hmm arthritis and before like that they think okay before it's rheumatoid arthritis time to time I get a flare up and I just have endured the pain mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. I come in and the patient to come in we went through a big part of the diet change yeah, again, tap in the stress part because that caused the flare up as well. Yeah. And with acupuncture and the cupping, and that uh, helped with the symptoms. And now the patient is keeping the uh, rheumatoid arthritis at remission. The pain wow. doesn't flare up. And that really can change someone's in an entire quality of life. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, so we can definitely see the um, benefits of, of acupuncture, but for somebody who is terrified of needles, mm -hmm. I have a family member who is, um, what are the options for them? So, yeah, I do. You, you, like, yeah. I have so many patients come in, like mm -hmm. they're terrified about the concept of the needle. Mm -hmm. First, usually, um, I would try to just give them a very small needle and they usually doesn't feel anything. Oh. But whoever who mm -hmm. is really like terrified about needles, we have what we call the uh, cupping. Mm -hmm. So which can do cupping on a specific acupuncture points or areas. For example, for cuff. Okay. For little kids, they're not good with the uh, needles. Okay. Then we do a cupping on their upper back, mm -hmm. trying to vent that energy, that heat, and mm -hmm. help them with the cuffing, cupping. Or uh, we have a moxa. Uh, which is a, um, a hmm. herbal uh, herbal stick in which we uh, burn. So the heat and then essential oil from ma marguar, that's the herbs, to stimulate the acupoints. And that's also caused a very profound, actually very profound healing effect. Wow, so you can target um, all of the, essentially the same diseases, illnesses, Exactly, ailments. use the same thing. Even like a gua sha, we use a jade or... Um, stone uh, boards into gua sha cause some underdermal bleeding causing the areas to heal wow. that's also effective point interesting yeah. so now does that would that help with circulation if people have circulation definitely. issues in the definitely. body definitely definitely mm -hmm. like for cupping and for gua sha for local pain and stimulate sometimes for people has injuries and cause atrophy of the muscle mm -hmm. those are very good mm -hmm. and for moxa for people with arthritis uh, usually affected by the cold or damp weather mm -hmm. and those are very very good interesting so now that you mentioned uh, you know cold or hot weather mm -hmm. I kind of want to talk about cold and hot when it comes to acupuncture yes yeah because I've heard you know let's say um, a practitioner say well you know there's too much heat mm -hmm. right? or it's too cold in exactly this organ. yeah yeah <laughs> so that's basically in and yang or cold or heat are the fundamental concepts in Chinese Chinese medicine okay. we believe everything is dual 
mm-hmm. right? And we have the hot weather, the bright color, and the red, the very loud sound. Those are yang aspects.、Mm-hmm. Versus you have the night, you have cold weather. Patients are more coming in like weak, very low voice to talk. Those are in aspects.、Mm-hmm. And in Chinese medicine, that's the basic balance that we need to do. If you don't know. Any principles? If you know how to balance in any in yang, make the body into that harmonized, balanced state, and、um, you're a good practitioner. Amazing. So, is it easy for somebody to recognize where they have that imbalance of the yin and yang?、Mm-hmm. Um, can we notice that ourselves? Yes, definitely.、Mm-hmm. So,、uh, for example, the easiest one: if you always feel your body is hot,、okay. and like you go to sleep at night,、mm-hmm. you would sweat. And either on the chest, on the back, and you have to put your feet off the blanket. And you always、uh, people is already wearing winter jacket. You still wear your sweatshirt. I <laughs> 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 will have yeah, some.、So、we know、yeah. people like that, yeah, or yeah. even their digestion wise,、mm-hmm. they very easy to tend to get constipation,、mm-hmm. and always have that、um, foul smell in their mouth.、Mm-hmm. It's very and at the tongue. Whenever they look, if they don't scrape their tongue, it's always that yellow, thick, greasy coating, and a very red tongue. Those are definitely. Definitely heat signs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Versus somebody is always feel cold, like to have warm food and covered by two blankets,、mm-hmm. and always never they feel always tired, and in that、uh, in that case digestion wise they might. Have the normal digest, or they e- very easily to have a loose stool and diarrhea. Those are definitely in type of patient or young deficient. So,、yeah. if we want to、um, combat those issues,、mm-hmm. can we do that through our diet and the foods that we eat? Definitely,、mm-hmm. definitely. So, for example, and、um, with easiest ones because you know patients come in, they don't want to take herbs. They want、mm-hmm. something their familiar food or tea. Okay. Right. If for people with the heat signs, for example. Constipation, really that、um, a red tongue,、mm-hmm. and I said、uh, any of the green smoothie. Now everybody likes green smoothie、yeah. or juicing. Those、yeah. are very cooling.、Yeah. Those are very good.、Mm-hmm. You would know people when they start doing the green juicing, their bowel movement has been amazing.、Mm-hmm. That's besides the fiber from the plants.、Mm-hmm. Also, all the green vegetables they are cooling in nature too. Right. Right. And、uh, we have our backyard amazing herb dandelion,、mm-hmm. like dandelion roots, dandelion leaf tea. Those are amazing cooling herbs as well. For whoever is always feeling cold, and we have.、Uh, Like I think, even in pastry, people love the cinnamon. Okay. If you have a cinnamon or turmeric,、mm-hmm. add all those into your diet, and you are creating like warming the middle and warming the body. Wonderful. So you mentioned having you know a green smoothie, which I think we've all sort of come to realize that it's so good for the body,、yes. and it's you know it makes us feel more energy,、mm-hmm. absorbing nutrients.、Mm-hmm. But what about somebody who、um, maybe already has too much of that cool energy in their body?、Yeah. Can they benefit from that?、Um, usually, I would say you know.、I'm It's very hard if you or real lifestyle is is doing all this green smoothie.、Mm-hmm. I suddenly have to tell you you can't do it. It's very、yeah. difficult.、Mm-hmm. I would choose a season. Like usually in the summer, I don't mind you do it.、Okay. In the winter, maybe not do it every day. Or I would suggest when you do your green smoothie, maybe add on a few pieces of ginger,、mm-hmm. or put like a half teaspoon turmeric to balance it out a bit.、Oh, yeah, great advice. Ex- yeah, exactly. So that、okay. kind of one balance it out, give you the hit. Heat,、mm-hmm. because you will notice that people do very long time, years of years of green smoothie,、mm-hmm. and they can times against like a little bit digesting,、uh, like the loose stool and stuff. Those are for early signs for us to telling you are damaging the young part of your middle body, your digestion.、Right. We need to address that. Welcome back to the studio here at 5D TV. I hope you are enjoying our special video presentation. While we still have a ways to go in the video, I wanted to stop for a moment and take you on a tour of the website 5D TV. When you're on the website and you scroll down the main page, you will see categories like documentaries, alternative medicine, series, inspiration. All you need to do is click on one of those categories, and it'll take you to another page. Where content is organized within that category, and then just click on a video or podcast that you want to watch or listen to. It's that easy. 5D TV can be accessed literally anywhere around the world that is plugged into the internet, and you can use it on your iPhone, your iPad, and even laptop. 
You can watch countless hours of mindful content that's going to help nurture your personal development and your spiritual growth. And it's ad-free. Oh, and I do suggest that you have a notepad and pen handy when you're watching the content on the network, just in case you want to record any aha moments, insights, or revelations you get along the way. I hope that this brief introduction to our website, 5D.TV, helps you to navigate easily through it. And now, let's get back to our Health and Wellness Summit. So, um, I have a friend of mine who, you know, loves herbs and to mm. take all this sort of healthy stuff, but mm -hmm. she, you know, mixes things um, all the time. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm not sure if that's a good thing to do mm -hmm. if you're not a TCM practitioner mm -hmm. where there's a certain balance, I would imagine, yes, of mixing definitely. things and maybe some things counteract each other. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so I said, if you use herbs, and um, the, it is the best to ask a TCM practitioner mm -hmm. because herbs has different uh, natures, like cooling and warming. If you're using them together, you counterproductive. And sometimes and they work on different parts of the body. So so it is best if you can ask professional uh, opinions and that would be great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think there's some, some real health benefits that can come from having that perfect balance and that right concoction. Definitely, definitely. So now what about um, Western society and um, Eastern? Can they be sort of mixed together? Oftentimes we will might go to, um, you know, pharmaceutical drugs mm -hmm. to treat pain mm -hmm. and inflammation disease or what mm -hmm. have you. Um, yeah, I think like, for example, I give you an example is in China. Mm -hmm. Every hospital has a TCM department. Oh. There's a major hospital is Chinese medicine oriented. Mm -hmm. And even in the Western medicine uh, hospital, they are uh, Chinese medicine department. So the two ways is always combined. Mm -hmm. For example, if patients after surgery uh, or even after chemotherapy, they would go to TCM mm -hmm. to build up the immunity and build up the defense me mechanism. And if like in China, unfortunately right now there's a high rise of cancer. Mm. And so people sometimes they can't even go to chemo because their hemoglobin is so low, their mm -hmm. body's so weak. They actually use TCM to build up their body. So it's almost like um, built up your defense immunity, then you are able to during the kind of a harsh treatment from chemotherapy. Yeah. So here, um, mm. definitely, um, I would suggest is always for, the only thing I would say is if you go to your doctor, you already have a blood pressure is like so high. Mm -hmm. That's the moment I said, okay, take that because yeah. that can be very dangerous. Take the high blood pressure, reduce it first, then come to us and we'll look at what is causing that. Okay, that's, right. good, that's good advice because uh, you don't want to sort of shock the system and the body. Right? Exactly, yeah. so because that can be very mm -hmm. critical. And okay. if patients come in with like severe chest stabbing pain, mm -hmm. like that, I would suggest, uh, I would tell them just go to the emergency right, right away. So there's definitely, there's pay place, even in like in Western world, there's mm -hmm. place for um, Western medicine for sure and uh, alternative medicine like TCM mm -hmm. and I believe as people's um, um, knowledge or understanding of all the holistic alternative health uh, rising they were find a perfect balance to how to incorporate the two medical system. So I would imagine that it's very important for um, patients to be very clear as to what medications they are taking. Definitely. But what about herbal supplements? If they're taking herbal supplements, would that also be beneficial to know their history? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, first, the two major questions asked is what medication and what supplements, including herbal uh, supplements okay. when a patient come in. And because, you know, um, the supplements, I found a lot of the European, North American herbs. So mm -hmm. it's different from the Chinese herbs. So I do have to find out what uh, uh, effects they're causing for the body. And then that can give me a better, uh, particularly if I have to prescribe Chinese herbs for them. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to un counter uh, interact with the herbs, what they're taking. Oh, okay. and, and also the other uh, things, three weeks before any surgery or major body uh, checkup and mm -hmm. I would just stop the patients taking any 
like herbal supplements. And so okay. that does not affect their readings. From okay. Them. Oh, yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah. So now if somebody's coming to you for the first time, mm -hmm. would you suggest that they bring their bottles of the, of the supplements that they're taking so that you can see the ingredients? Yes, yeah. exactly. Or even don't bring, but definitely take a picture so I can read on the ingredients. Okay. Yeah. Because, and a lot of different, I found it now because they read on the internet or, you mm -hmm. know, friends recommended, they ended up have taking quite a bit different combination of herbs and it's really important for us as TCM practitioners to know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. So let's talk about um, energy um, mm -hmm. and you know how you determine again the energy. How can we tap into energy? I remember going to a conference and mm -hmm. I just thought it was so fascinating that um, and he was like a Chinese master uh, yeah. uh, practitioner yeah. and you know he just did this sort of energy with his hands, rubbing his hands mm -hmm. together and we all sort of mimicked what he did and you could feel yeah. the vibration of yeah. the energy. Yeah, exactly. It's like when you feel it, it's like a, a ball like circling mm -hmm. and then it's very hard to push in, right? Yeah. And that's kind of very the easiest way for everybody wants to experience the existence of energy, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. But now, you know, with the Western scientific um, mm -hmm. like uh, development now, we're talking about so much now about quantum physics. Mm -hmm. I think that is a perfect bridge to understand TCM, to understand acupuncture. You know, we are all connected as a web of energy. Everything is connected. Everything affects everything. Mm -hmm. So that's from the quantum physics point of view. So um, like if any patient wants to dive down to understand, or even some of my students from school, and that's the book I would uh, recommend them to, to, to read some mm -hmm. like basic quantum physics, because that I think is the most scientific way to explain what is Chinese medicine we talked about the chi, we talked about energy. Amazing. You know, this is so great because there's so much information available out there and there's so many different uh, modalities of healing these days. Definitely. So it's really important to highlight them for everyone so that they know what is going to work for for them. Now, is there anybody that um, any of these modalities would not work for? Is there anything, do you, do you ask people to sort of stay away if they have a particular illness or disease or is it all encompassing? Um, I think from um, my um, practicing experiences, mm -hmm. and, um, if anything, um, in, like a TCM, let's see, uh, in TCM in China back in those days, we, like there's no Western medicine, yeah. right? It's all, we covered everything. Mm -hmm. We even covered emergency. We even had surgeries in China through TCM practitioners. Wow. Yeah, we had like the earliest back in um, a thousand years, we had eye surgery and brain surgery. From performed wow. by practitioners back in those and days so already. And so the results from those surgeries mm -hmm. were effective. Uh, yes, well, wow. effective. And even um, before the Chinese uh, like Western medicine come in for cataracts, we actually use acupuncture needles to treat a cataract wow. to get rid of that to film kind of white film yeah. thing over your sclera. So that's yeah. what we use to treatment. But uh, nowadays, like for any, um, I would say emergency. That's definitely I think emergency surgeries. Those are definitely the expertise for uh, Western medicine. Right. But for any recovery for chronic degenerative disease, mm. I think definitely give all alternative medicine, particularly TCM uh, practice or try. Yeah, I think it's really um, going from that the holistic approach. And I want to talk about that because mm -hmm. I know that you wrote a chapter in a book called Holistic Healing. Exactly. So um, this book is called a Holist Holistic uh, Healing, um, Theories, Practices and Social Changes. Mm -hmm. So it's edited by Professor Peter Dong. And we are me together uh, with my colleague Dalen. Uh, we wrote a chapter about the Chinese medicine. So this book intended for all, um, um, I think for nurses, a lot of uh, uh, Western medicine uh, kind of professions to read, mm -hmm. to understand the holistic healing, uh, what modalities they are and what they can change and what they can help. And so all the um, Western medicine professions uh, practitioner they would understand a bit so you know the lot of patients now go to visit their doctor they wouldn't tell the doctor they're taking herbs they're doing acupuncture mm -hmm. doing a chiro all this so I think it's really um, um, I think it's an amazing project to uh, to bridge the two medical system mm -hmm. absolutely I love that all right so where is your practice and how um, can people find you my practice is in Concord mm -hmm. and so uh, my uh, clinic name is called Bodhi Tree or Orient Health Clinic mm -hmm. and so you can find me online at bodytreehealthclinic.com and um, yeah that's where yes. I'm practicing. <laughs> that's 
awesome. All right. So, and just also, I, I'm, I'm interested in um, how, how you got into the industry, into the whole business of uh -huh. you know, traditional Chinese medicine. Is this something that was passed down? Um, through your family to you? Uh, so uh, my family is always in the environment very much involved in Chinese medicine mm -hmm. and so especially my aunt and she she's not a practitioner but like she self and taught and was practicing at home mm -hmm. and this, and I when I had my um, two kids here I, I found a lot of those when they are sick and a lot of those um, like that holistic approach was not given when mm. I uh, bring them to visit to the doctor so you know sometimes you don't need the in intervention of medication yet but then there's no other uh, methods or ways they were uh, giving as a suggestion so that kind of pushed me uh, want to dive into the um, uh, TCM world and uh, to have the better approach of the assistant mm -hmm. and the alternative uh, uh, healing. Phenomenal. So when it comes to herbs uh, and you know Chinese herbs specifically I'm referring to, um, what are some of the heavy hitters that are so effective? I know that um, you know angelica root might be used mm -hmm. for, for certain things, but mm -hmm. what, what are some of the most important ones that are, are you're seeing? So uh, from taste-wise and mm. effect-wise, an angelica root, that's a major um, blood tonic. And for okay. somebody with uh, blood deficiencies, mm. like the paleness, pale tongue, pale face, and forgetfulness, all the symptoms for blood deficiency. Mm. The other one's American ginseng. You know, everybody knows it. It's a major chi and in tonic. So, for example, um, for people always have a weak constitution, very easily get cold, catch a yeah. cold in the winter. Yeah. Those I would definitely let them to take it for mm -hmm. the tea on a regular basis. And the other one is dandelion. I, I, I love dandelion. I think it's like in our backyard. It's so widely available. Hmm. But there's so many ways you can use The first one is it's a constipation. Okay. I even sometimes gave the parents, if the babies is having a week is has no bowel movement mm -hmm. and they are not there willingly to take enema. I even sometimes just boil a little bit dandelion roots or dandelion leaf tea. Mm -hmm. It helps to relieve that. It's almost like a very mild laxatives. And for dandelion, for any um, acne, and you even can grind again a dandelion, add a little bit of tea tree essential oil, wow. add some yogurt because it mm -hmm. has probiotics. You mm -hmm. can use your facial right oh, that's there. That's amazing, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and also for um, in China, for mm -hmm. women has especially mothers after the breastfeed, they kind of inflammation mm -hmm. uh, when mm -hmm. they during the breastfeeding and have that wet, uh, red swollen breast is really painful. Mm -hmm. And in China, we uh, again grind the dandelion leaves and we do an external uh, paste and apply that and that reduces the inflammation mm -hmm. like that's one my one of my favorite herbs that's so great yeah. I know there's a whole list of them um, but of course if you uh, you know are able to pick up on holistic healing the book there'll be some great information there as Definitely. well to help you and to guide you um, one thing that that I, I think uh, we hear when it comes to um, Chinese medicine traditional therapies mm -hmm. practices is the terminology of um, brain fog or a fogginess in the body, mm -hmm. uh, dampness. Yeah. What is the, what does that mean? So that dampness is a one we said is external pathogens or pathogens causing problems in your body. Okay. So um, I would always think like think about a um, river flow when it has a free flow. The water is a clear. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's very nice, and, mm -hmm. the, and the fish can survive. All the water animals can survive. Right. But once you break that. Uh, uh, flow and the water becomes dead water mm -hmm. then you have that smell all comes out in the turbid water and nothing oh, okay. can live so the dampen is almost like that mm -hmm. no free flow so it's very heavy it's very turbid and it's giving that heavy sensation and if dampness involved in any disease you are trying to treat it takes a longer time mm -hmm. and for example how you know whether you have dampness in your body is usually uh, people have dense they're a little bit overweight okay and their diet usually include a lot of dairy, mm -hmm. sweet, cold food. What about processed foods? Exactly, yeah. that's a okay. major one too. Mm -hmm. And also their tons usually have that white greasy coating mm -hmm. and uh, body is very heavy 
and a lot of them have uh, arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. Right. And for uh, women, when you have the vaginal discharges, can be very, very a lot, a large amount, very sticky, and sometimes very smelly. Wow. So those are the very general signs. You can help yourself decide whether you have dampness. Also, the mm -hmm. candidas and yeast infections mm -hmm. is very common as well. So what about people who have been taking um, antibiotics? Mm -hmm. um, will they experience sort of any sort of benefit from having acupuncture or herbal treatments just to rid the body of the buildup of the toxins? That, definitely. That? So mm -hmm. antibiotics. Uh, from a TCM point of view, it's very cold. Okay. It's effective to uh, to treat the, the inflammation mm -hmm. or infections you're having. But if you take it for a prolonged time, because right now patients sometimes they give 30 days of uh, antibiotics, wow. like a very okay. long time, mm -hmm. and that is damage you, uh, damage you first of all your stomach. Mm -hmm. You will hear people coming right away with uh, uh, upset stomach and diarrhea, loose stool. Mm -hmm. That's first part of when you treat. So with acupuncture, with some warming herbs we can restore because Chinese medicine again very focused on your digestion mm -hmm. without proper digestion you don't have nutrient properly transferred to your body and you are always in that uh, your immunity would be low and right now we're talking about so much about gut health gut health yes, right absolutely. the by um, like the probiotics the good bacteria in your gut mm -hmm. has a, a whole a uh, whole range of uh, functions, for example, for your like brain clarities, mm -hmm. for your immunities, and that's a big part too. Yeah, and just basic energy, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So, in what way, or is is it um, preventable? Right? Could you use? traditional Chinese medicine as a preventative measure? Definitely. I think actually that's one of the um, like top, uh, what would say the features or advantages for traditional Chinese medicine because we always think our body is mimicking the nature. Mm -hmm. So which part is at the Western medicine we're not often talk about, right? When you're sick, just treat the disease, mm -hmm. right? But in Chinese medicine, because you're supposed to live according to the nature, so know your, you, then you know your body. You know, some people just every time in that winter, they just caught asthma or they just frequent a cold. Mm -hmm. So if you know that, and I would suggest patients, maybe in the fall, come in for a few treatment, take some herbs you already uh, benefit your body and build immu immunity, then you won't get sick anymore. Mm -hmm. For example, ladies suffer from dysmenorrhea, very painful menstrual, every month. You know every month you're going to have the same symptoms. Mm -hmm. And I have patients right now, one week before their menstrual, they come in, we give one treatment of acupuncture and then take some herbs, a few days of herb, they will have a very smooth cycle. Wow. So they don't have to take painkillers right. during your menstrual cycles anymore. So um, definitely I think that's a big part. Even for children, for my mm -hmm. own kids, in the winter, it's very easy, you know, in your school. Oh, one kid yes. is sick, the whole class is yep. sick. So, um, like a herbal bath and, and, and essential oil uh, diffuser in a home. So, all preventative, you know, uh, act ahead of time, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. So and as you important. mentioned, it's so important for the kids as well to have, you know, the, the benefits of acupuncture, yep. uh, herbs and all, and, and what have you, because it's never too early to start. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If, like, we have a Babies come in. We give like um, like baby massage, a twin arm massage to help Aww, out <laughs> to help yeah. with the digestion for colicky babies. So those are very wonderful ways to treat. Yeah, phenomenal. Well, let everybody know again how they can find you. Uh, so uh, my clinical uh, clinic name is called Bodhi Tree Oriental Health Clinic. Website is bodhitreehealthclinic.com, and the phone number is 905-760-7542. Or you can find my clinic on social media. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anway. It's a Thank pleasure you very having much. you here. Thank I love you. all the information. You gave us a lot to absorb. Thank you so much for watching this video interview. If you'd like to watch more videos like this, then have a look at our, our website, www.5d.tv. And in fact, you can subscribe to one of our memberships by supporting 5D TV, you can help us continue to produce meaningful, valuable content that can help quantum leap your life to wellness.